George Lucas um, wanted to take his 30-year-old uh, um, uh, series, Star Wars, and excite a new generation of kids about it. So he took the Star Wars series and created a Star Wars mashup site. And what the Star Wars mashup site did was to take Lucas clips or clips from the Star Wars movies and make it available for kids to take and to remix, upload their own music, upload their own pictures, mix them together and create little mini Lucas movies. Um, so once again, what Lucas was trying to do was to produce a world where people were sharing their movies and activity and excitement around this um, series of films. But by doing that, he wanted, obviously, to leverage that excitement into more value for Lucas. Now, the point to see is that this is, an, this is a newly empowered kind of economy that I think the internet is supporting. I'm not saying it never existed outside the internet, but I am saying <laughs> the internet makes it more feasible for a wider range of commerce. And indeed, once you see the model of the hybrid, it's hard to see any interesting internet business that isn't actually trying to deploy the hybrid. So think about Amazon. Is Amazon just a commercial economy? Because so much of the value of Amazon comes from people for free contributing to Amazon reviews of books that try to signal to other people which books they should buy and which books they shouldn't. People devoting their time to making Jeff Bezos' company more profitable. Or, even a company like Microsoft recognizes this. Microsoft has an enormous customer support center, which is driven in large part by a user-generated content group where people spend an extraordinary amount of time helping other Microsoft users use Microsoft products. These people do it for free. They just sit there and they answer questions on these Microsoft websites. Um, to help other people use Microsoft products. So instead of going down to their church on Sunday and helping with a bake sale or something like that, they spend their time trying to help Microsoft make more money. Now, <laughs> it's a bizarre fact, right? But it's not an accident. There's something called the Communities Technology Group inside of Microsoft. A guy named Mark Smith runs it. He's a brilliant uh, former academic. Um, and they devote an enormous amount of energy to tracking the, quote, health of communities. They have ways to measure whether the communities are interacting with each other in a healthy, productive way. And if they are, then they encourage them. If they're not, they figure out what they can do to encourage it. But that activity of encouraging and fostering the healthy community translates into more profit for Microsoft because there are more happy Microsoft users. Now, I think this vision of the hybrid is a good one. I celebrate it. I promote it. I think it's something that we should understand and try to encourage. Because what it does is enable a commercial platform upon which an important social activity gets built. Because the stuff that's going on in the sharing community is the kind of human interaction we should be encouraging. And if a commercial framework around it makes it possible, then more power to the commercial framework. But I think what's interesting is Commercial entities are just beginning to figure out how they should relate to the sharing economies. So one model of this I think of as the Darth Vader model, which you'll see in a second, relates directly to the Lucas story. Um, if you read the terms of service on the George Lucas site, George Lucas's uh, uh, lawyers have said that when that kid takes the Lucas mo movies and remixes it, George Lucas owns all the rights. Indeed, if the kid composes music and uploads it to George Lucas's site and remixes it with George <coughs> Lucas's movies, George Lucas has a worldwide perpetual free right to exploit that music to his own advantage without paying the kid a dime, right? Essentially, this is sharecropping in the digital age that he has created. And you can understand why he did it. The lawyers who George Lucas employees are people that you know I've trained and other people from my university have trained. And how do, we t how do we train Hollywood lawyers? We train them to be as aggressive as they possibly can, to take all the rights they possibly can. That's their job. If they leave anything on the table, they've failed. Well, the point to recognize is that attitude is going to be destructive, counterproductive in this new hybrid economy. What, they, what we need to do is to encourage a way of thinking about the proper relationship between the commercial entity and the sharing economy, or at least we don't need to legislate it or worry about anybody doing it from a policy perspective. My prediction is 
that businesses that think about this in an appropriate way will be more successful than businesses that think about this in a traditional way.